to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the nomadic lifestyle, click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. So, as I've mentioned several times now, Carolyn and I are quitting the nomadic lifestyle and we're going to start off-grid living uh, in a tiny house. And so we've come to Missouri to look for a piece of property. Got a really good offer on 10 acres and decided we didn't want that one. So we continued looking. We found another piece of property, uh, acre and a half, has a well on it. And so we, we went ahead and bought that one. Got a really good price on it. The reason we're not there yet, we're at mom's house right now, is because as, as you can see, it's, it's snowing. It's very cold. And in order to do anything, I think, we're gonna have to have warmer weather. I, you know, I still gotta install the well. I gotta get the camper off the truck. Uh, we gotta clean up the property a little bit. So there's a lot to do so we can actually live on the property. And I, it's just too cold to do anything really for any long periods of time. Yesterday it was so cold and windy that if you were outside for 15 minutes, uh, you would have gotten frostbitten. They have warnings all over the place. But I did want to describe to you what our plans are. So I think in the next week it's supposed to warm up and get up to 42 degrees. And we're going to go on down there, I think around February 1st and immediately start putting in our well pump. We have a, I, I've received a well pump. I'm gonna show you how that works. Once we get the well pump put in, then we're gonna take the camper off the back of the truck, but I gotta do some work to that as well. I'm gonna show you what we need to do. And then I'm gonna install solar panels. Like I said, next week we're gonna go and install the well pump. And so I have the well pump right here. Got it yesterday, or day before yesterday. Now what happens is, is that well pump will get dropped down into the well and then there'll be a hose that comes out of the top of it. It's a one and a quarter inch hose. We're gonna use polypropylene uh, black hole hose. And so it hooks right to the top. The well is 130 feet deep. And so we'll put it down about 120 feet deep. And then we'll have another 100, about, well, maybe about 70 feet of hose running out of the, of the hole in the well. And what we're gonna do, we're not gonna put a pressure tank on it. Most wells, have a pressure tank. So the, the well pump fills the pressure tank and then the pressure tank actually supplies water to your house. And so the, that's all the well does is just fill up the pressure tank. We're not gonna have a pressure tank. We're gonna buy a ICB tank. It's like 275 gallons. And we're run a pump, a, an RV pump off that tank. And so our water will be supplied by battery. This will only fill the tank. So I only have to fill the tank, what, maybe every couple of weeks? maybe every month. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the generator to run the pump to fill the tank. Now I've already been told in the comment section, you can't run a well pump off a generator, not unless you've got 30 or 60 amp generator, you can't do that, so it's 210. No, they sell these pumps now in 115 volts. So you can literally plug this into the wall of your house. So it's a two wire system. There's a ground, the yellow wire, and then, that, and I've already tested it, I plugged it in and uh, put it in a trash can, I filled up a trash can with water, plugged this into an extension cord, fired right up, pumped the water. I was expecting a big, huge stream to shoot up. I didn't know what to expect, but it just kind of bubbled out just like it was supposed to. And so I'm gonna run this off the generator. Now, in the future, we are going to run it off solar panels. Now, they do sell solar panel uh, pumps just like this, but they're really expensive. I'm not going to buy, buy a lot of solar panels right off front. I'm going to buy three of them, and that'll power the house. But as we get the house built, I'll start adding more solar panels on, and then I'll be able to run this off an inverter, and we'll be able to run it just like a regular pump in the house, you know, it, it, with regular electric. Now, I would suspect that we will only run it during the day, because you don't want to run it off batteries. This is only 700 watts, 1400 peak, so when it starts up, it's a 1400 watt peak, drops right back down to 700, I don't know, 50 watts or whatever it is. We'll be able to run that off an inverter. But if you run it at night, you wouldn't be able to recharge your batteries because solar only charges during the day. So pretty much you just have water during the day. And at night, of course, you're not gonna be using a lot of water. This is gonna work perfectly. Very happy with that 115 because originally I didn't think you could buy them either in, in 115 volts. Now, once we get the well put in next week, we're gonna come back up here with lumber 
and I'm going to start building the base to my camper just on the other side of that fence. And a lot of people don't understand how this camper is built. When we built it, uh, I didn't want a lot of weight on the truck. The truck's only a four-cylinder truck. So I had to keep it light. So what you see right here is all there is. From here down, where the bed of the truck is down, that's the floor of our camper. The truck itself is the floor of the camper. So down here, we can take showers inside the camper. The water drains right onto the floor of the truck. There's a hole in the front here of the bed of the truck where the water drains right into a black tub that we have. Temporarily, we're gonna live in this thing until we get our tiny house built. So we're gonna take this off the truck so we can have the access to our truck to buy, you know, go get supplies and things. So we'll take this off the truck and set it on a platform that I'm gonna build. The platform is gonna re replace the truck. So it's only gonna be, what, maybe, I think it's, this is 22 inches. So it's only gonna be 22 inches high. And so I gotta build basically three walls, this side, the front side, and the other side, so it can sit on the, the ground. And this will be our house for a year or two until we get our tiny house built. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna free up a lot of space inside the camper also, because this right here is wasted space. Well, that's just the cab over right there. But what we'll do is we'll add on a wall here all the way down, and that'll give us room where we can put our refrigerator, we'll put our battery and our inverter in there. Uh, so we'll have more room inside the camper that we can actually live and all our accessory items will be on, out here basically on the outside So we'll come out of the camper walk around and grab things that we need out of here. We could put a, our, a dresser in there For our clothes. So it really will open up a lot of space in there Now what's interesting about this camper is when we built it Everybody said, oh, this isn't gonna work. It isn't gonna work. It isn't gonna work Just like they're saying about this pump now they're telling me the pump isn't gonna work with the generator. Oh, I can't do that. It's, it's funny when people say you can't do something because you, I have proven that you can do this. You can build your own camper and it can last. It's lasted two years and we, I fully expect it to last another couple years until we get our tiny house built. This thing's pretty solid. It's, it's a lot better than most manufactured campers. I mean, I've had a few issues with it. Like I had to put the Coroplast on, but it was an easy modification. It only cost like $200 to, to make it so it was permanent. And then when I get this off, I can repair some of these things under here that I've been lacking on just general maintenance stuff. You know, people are telling me you can't use the well pump with a generator because it's 220. Well, they said it before they even researched. They're telling me what I can't do and they don't know because I literally have one that I have plugged into the wall of the house, which is the same as a generator. The generator is 2000 watts. This is going to be 740 watts, 1400 peak, so whatever you want to look at. It'll run it just fine. The other, th the other thing is, is in the review section of the Amazon page that I bought this from, someone literally said, I have a 300 foot well. Now I only have 130 foot, so mine's much shorter out of my old farm. He says, I dropped this pump down there. I run it with my 3000 watt Honda generator and I've been running, I think he said three days straight. Been running great. So you can do things. Uh, you just got to do a lot of research. And I think that's where the failure of things are is with a lot of folks is, is the amount of research you got to do and the things you get wrong while doing research. Then finally, what I'm going to do uh, while we're here with an address. See, the property doesn't have an address yet. We're going to have to establish an address. We have to go to the post office, and I, I'm not sure what all that entails. But while we're here at mom's house, I'm trying to order supplies because it's 130 miles down there from mom's house, so I don't want to have to drive back and forth all the time. So we'll get a solar panels and uh, materials and different things that we need. So we're going to buy three solar panels, 100 watt solar panels, and that gives us 300 watts of solar which will do this just fine. Probably won't have to use the generator very often, which is what I'm really hoping for. Maybe every couple of weeks to top off the batteries. The generator will only be used to run the well to fill the ICB tanks. We've only had the property for a week, finally got the pump, and of course it turned real cold, so we're gonna go down there, and I, I think in another couple of weeks, get the well installed, and then come back and start building the base for the camper. Thanks for watching.
click like if you like the video and happy travels